I would definitely look good with flowers in my hair. Hello and welcome to me persuading you to buy yet another Hoya. But trust me, this one is worth your every cent, which is probably something I say each time I bring out one of these videos, but this time I truly mean it, as well as those other times, I, I also mean that too. Today we will talk about this lovely thing here, it is Hoya Patricia. We will talk about its origins, how I care for my plant, and we will talk very, very little about cross-pollination simply because it's not a topic I'm very well versed in, but I can tell you right away it is something that interests me a lot. Shockingly. So grab your popcorn or your plant that you need to repot, whatever you need to do, and let's get started. And I will finally make a label for this plant. Yes, labels are a thing here now. I realize they have a couple of plants here and there, and it would not be the worst thing to label them and to write where I got them, when I got them, and so on. So let's just do the label. The label is done. We can see here the name is Hoya Patricia, and it looks very professional. Let's just put it in the plant, if it will fit. Come on. Accept your name. <laughs> Don't embarrass me in front of the camera. I mean, doesn't that look professional? It just elevates the plant to a whole new level and it makes me look like I know what I'm doing and like I have my together. What I wrote on my label is that this is Hoya Patricia and that is a cross with Darwini and Elliptica. On the back I wrote when I got it. So it says here May 2021 from Camilla SG, that's Camilla Selholm Getting, and it is from Sweden. Now I know where I got this plant and when I got it. And yes, this is Hoya Patricia that I got as a small cutting in 2021, in May of 2021. And you can see how much this plant grew. But that's something that we will discuss a bit later, so I'm going to put my plant off to the side. Grab a drink, which is coffee today, and it, it is coffee every day, and we will continue. If you noticed, I wrote Hoya Patricia under single quotation marks. And this is a standard way how we will write the name of the cross or how we will write the name of the cultivar. So you will capitalize the name of the species and then under single quotation marks you will put the name of the cross or you will put the name of the cultivar. If you want to know more about this, I made a video on how to properly write Hoya names. Nice way to plug your own content, Miro. Hoya Patricia is a cross that was made by Anton Jones in Sarasota, Florida, and I do believe that the cross was made in Mary Selby Botanical Gardens in Sarasota, and I am just now realizing I had a chance to ask Anton about this, but I forgot. Hoya damn it, Miro! It's okay, I'm not angry. The important thing here is that the cross was indeed made by Anton Jones, and it was made in Florida in 2014. And I can tell you I'm very surprised that it has become so popular, or actually I'm not surprised. It is a vigorous grower, blooms early, and has a gorgeous flower. I'm not surprised. I guess the part that I'm surprised about, or that I'm most surprised about, is how quickly it made the rounds in the Hoya world. It seems that a lot of people do have this Hoya, depending again where you are in the world, and that it has become one of the favorites in many Hoya collections. I can definitely tell you it is possibly one of my most favorite Hoyas, and you know, these things change of course from time to time, but I love it for everything that this plant has to offer. I had the luck of exchanging few words with Anton because I was very interested to find out about the origins of this plant, but also I was interested to find out more about the process of hand pollinating and crossing Hoyas. Hoya Patricia is not Anton's first attempt at crossing Hoyas, and that's the tricky part. You know, I get asked a lot of the times how to hand pollinate Hoyas or how to cross them, and it ain't easy, let me tell you, and also it may not be necessary depending on what you want to cross and what you want to make. If you ask many of the collectors, they will tell you that they're not really in favor of the crosses, and that is understandable. There are a lot of species out there, a lot of unnamed species, a lot of clones, a lot of crosses where we know both of the parents, and then a lot of the crosses where we don't know who the parents are, and then there are crosses out there that look nearly identical 
identical to one another. Am I talking about all the pubic helixes? Perhaps. Wait, that is actually a mistake. I'm definitely talking about all the Hoya pubic helixes. What's up with that? The, like, some of them look identical to me. And also, why do we keep calling them pubic helixes? Anton told me that a lot of the crosses he attempted ended up bearing sterile fruit, meaning there is no embryo in the seed. Now, I believe that for you and for me, that is a bit beyond our comprehension. Well, maybe not for you over there. No, no, not you. Definitely for you. It's, yeah, you, you are way in over your head. No, the, the person behind you. Yeah, you, you know what's up. I can see it in your eyes. I'll keep my eye on you. That's awkward. When you're trying to cross-pollinate Hoyas, you have to also understand what species can be crossed with one another. Now, to my understanding, you can cross something that is fairly similar, like Hoya finlaysoni and Hoya incrassata, and then you will end up with a cross like Hoya jennifer, or you can cross two species that naturally occur in the same territory. For example, Hoya darwini and Hoya elliptica, which both can be found in Philippines. However, you would not want to cross something like Hoya lacunosa and Hoya lauterbaki. Let's just agree not to cross Hoya lauterbaki with anything. Can you tell I'm not a fan? That example may be a bit banal, but it serves its purpose. I think. And Anton himself did confirm this, he said that the issues he was facing is because he was trying to cross species that are too far apart from one another. So he decided to cross Philippine species Hoya darwini and clone from Philippine of Hoya elliptica. And did that work? Ding dong! 10 out of 10, and totally believable. Ding dong, darling, you nailed it! Amazing! By the way, have you seen Glow Up? If not, you have got to watch it. Skills of some of those people is beyond amazing. But not before this video is over, I'm not done yet. Another reason why Anton decided to cross Hoya Darwini with Hoya Elliptica is because generally Hoya Elliptica is known in Hoya world as unproblematic fast growing Hoya, while Hoya Darwini is known as, let's just say Mr. Mr. Struggle. I did not hear a lot of people having something kind to say about Hoya Darwini. As you know, cross-pollination was successful and he got many seedlings which started to grow and bloom and he picked the seedling with the white Corolla and red Corona that today we know as Hoya Patricia. Now there were other seedlings he told me and there were seedlings that had completely pink flower and he sent me the photos of those and I can tell you I'm very sad that that one also did not make it in circulation but I will take what I can get. This is also another interesting thing. When you cross-pollinate Hoyas, you will get a lot of seedlings and each of them will be unique. And this will be true for all plants. When you're trying to make a cross, you will get a lot of the seedlings and they will each be unique. It is very important to be critical in this process and to pick which one you want to keep. Sometimes that can be one, like the case with Hoya Patricia, but sometimes maybe it is two seedlings, like Hoya Mathilde and Hoya Shuke, or sometimes it may be none. As I previously mentioned, there are many clones, many species, many crosses in circulation already. So, you know, why are you choosing to pick this one? Is it because of the flower? Is the flower a different color? Is it bigger? Is it smaller? Is it a more vigorous grower? Now, in my opinion, this was a great pick because Hoya Darwini is very difficult to grow for a lot of people. And to have a cross with Hoya Darwini that can grow so easily and so fast that is fantastic. Plus, the flower is very unique. So to me, that makes a lot of sense. But there are crosses out there that I'm not really sure should be really in circulation. I may or may not be referring to some Hoya Pubicarelixis. When you're trying to make a cross, it is also very nice to know who the parents of the cross are. Sometimes people will not know who the father of the cross is, and this is precisely the reason why collectors don't really like the crosses, because father is unknown. You know, one day he went out for a pack of cigarettes and he never came back, or in plant world he left for a... Okay, this analogy is over here. The way this happens is if you have several species in bloom and you have them, for example, outside, it can happen that one of the species becomes pollinated and you don't really know how. You didn't do it, some of the bugs did it, and you don't really know who the father is. By the way, when you are making a cross, the father is the plant from which the pollen came and the mother is the plant that you're trying to pollinate. A good example here are anthuriums. 
a lot of the species out there are actually not species, but they are hybrids, and it's not really known hybrid of what. A lot of Anthurium crystallinum out there, they are not true to species, they are all hybrids. At least that's what I'm told, so I would really like to know what is the true Anthurium crystallinum. But this story today is not about Anthuriums, it is about Hoyas. We will return to Anthuriums one day in the distant future. When Anton picked the seedling he liked best, he decided to name it after his son's mother, and that is how we got Hoya Patricia. And now you know the entire history of Hoya Patricia, and tell me, isn't your day at least 1% better? Okay, now it's time to slowly dive into the care. <laughs> Just kidding, you're on your own, bye! I apologize for that, but it was a nice way to plug in my channel, wasn't it? And it's a great way to keep this video more upbeat. Plus, I may not need to mention subscribe at the end of the video. I still have some of your attention, so let's do continue with the care. As I previously mentioned, I got my plant in May of 2021, and I do think I made a video about that Hoya Hall. I think I called it Massive Hoya Hall. And you can see the size of the cutting. I do believe it was four leaves and two nodes. I did cut it very early on because I traded the cutting for something else, and I noticed that the plant is going to be a fast grower, but I did not really know how fast of a grower it is going to be. And it does look small here in this um, frame, but trust me, the vines are over one meter long. They are wrapped around several times. So I think you can probably even see somewhere here that they do wrap around so many times. This is just a close up of my terrible trellising, but you can see here they do wrap around several times. I think it makes for a nice, bushier, more lush looking plant, and it also saves space, so we love that. I do have a bit of damage here on this leaf. I think I sprayed it with something, but I don't remember with what. But the leaves were mostly perfect, and then we just have this one that's being a bit unbehaving, but the rest of the plant, I think, looks great. Of course, you are here for the flowers, so you can see how lovely the flower is. I do have to say, my flower is not really pure white. I do think this is supposed to be more pure white. It is a bit pinkish, but that may be due to the light or due to some of the conditions. I know that Camilla's plant will sometimes bloom like this. Sometimes it will be a bit pinkish and sometimes it will be white. So I think it's very interesting that I have this, you know, plant that can change-ish the color of the flower. This plant, just like Hoya elliptica, is very, very easy to root. I do believe I rooted mine in water, and within a week you will see roots. You will have no issues rooting it, and I can tell you probably all the best characteristics of this plant do come from Hoya elliptica. Fast growing, easy to root, all of those come from Hoya elliptica, and all the bad things about Hoya elliptica do not show up in this plant. Sometimes when you spray Hoya elliptica with fertilizer, you may get blemishes on the leaves. That is not the case with Hoya patricia. It's really the best of the both worlds of Darwini and elliptica. This plant first grew in cocoa peat and perlite in half and half mix of cocoa peat and perlite and since I moved it to semi-hydro and really the only reason is because the summer was very hot, it was extremely difficult for me to keep up with all of my plants to keep them watered, plus the pandemic slash depression and all that stuff, so you know. I will take all the help that I can get. And it definitely likes being in semi-hydro. I do have this microfiber here and I'm spilling water everywhere. I just watered the plant, but it does like it. It's of course not the only way to grow this plant. It did really well in cocoa peat and perlite, but once again, it was too hot and too difficult for me to take care of all of my plants well. As I mentioned, it is indeed a very, very, very vigorous grower, and I think this is something you need to see for yourself. It's unlike any other hoa that I have. I think it's probably the fastest one if you compare it to Pobacalyx, to Elliptica, to any other really fast-growing hoya, Imperialis. This is 
faster, at least in my conditions and in my opinion. It did not have any issues in both organic and inorganic mixes. I did not have any issues with rot. I don't think it's so easy to rot this one. I think actually that this one prefers to be a bit more on the moist side. It doesn't mean that you should constantly water it, you know, don't water your plant every day, but it does not like to completely dry out, kind of like Hoya elliptica. You will notice if you have Hoya elliptica that if, you, if it dries out, the leaves will become very pliable and not as sexy, so that's the same thing here. It does not like to be bone dry. The plant did really well for me both in summer and now when we are going into the fall. Now this is not really a complete care guide because I only had the plant for, what, five months, but in those five months the plant managed to grow a lot and to bloom and there are many more peduncles that I can see on the vine. So I can tell you a bit about the plant, but of course don't take this as the complete guide. I think maybe in a year or two I can bring out another video where I can tell you more about the plant. But what I can gather from these five months of growing it is that it doesn't like to dry out. It will do well in various conditions. Again, it does really well for me in summer when it was very hot out and it was very dry and it wasn't really that much more humid in my room. It was maybe around 50%. And it also does really well now when it's around 23, 24 degrees of Celsius and 70% of humidity does really well in both conditions. One thing that I did notice, which is kind of true for Hoya elliptica as well, is that if it gets too close to the light, the leaves will start to get smaller and they will start to look not as attractive. And you can see on my plant that these leaves that were closer to the light do look a bit chlorotic and the reason for that is because the light is i would say here from this plant so as they get closer they will start to look not as deep green like these on the bottom and they you know they will not look as big they get smaller and a bit more chlorotic which is a look that i do not like i don't appreciate so i will probably move this plant to a shelf where i have more space and when we come to shelves, it lives just right there on that shelf under a 36 watt LED light. There is a northwest facing window there, so it gets some of the light from that window, but most of the light will come from that LED lamp. The flower does have a bit of a sweet scent to it, and there is some nectar here, which I'm not sure if my camera will be able to pick up. And it does last quite a few days. This is the third or fourth day for my flower and I will maybe write somewhere on the screen how long it lasted for because this video will not get edited for a while. I did read somewhere that it can last anywhere from four days up to a week. I do think the length of the flower will depend on the conditions. So if it's very warm and very dry, they will probably last a whole lot less than if the temperature was a bit milder and if it were more humid. I water my plant once a week with rainwater and I do add each time orchid fertilizer because it is in semi-hydro. When it was in organic mix, I would also water it once a week and I should have watered it less because the summer was once again very hot. But in general, I would aim from five to six days. I would check if my plant needs to be watered. The, the, that's nasty. <laughs> It's making, sometimes nectars do make a lot of mess and that's the case in this, in this plant as well. It's sticky. In any case, if you have a chance to get this plant 10 out of 10, Miro's recommendation, I do believe this is one of the prettiest crosses that I have and it's one of the prettiest blooms that I have. It looks very, very nice when it starts to open and just even the closed buds look very appealing. So I don't think you will be disappointed. Plus it blooms early on. It is very easy to care for and I do believe this hood deserves a whole lot more popularity than it already has. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed the video and that you learned something new. I once again want to thank again Anton for replying to me. Thank you so much for all the information that you have given me on this plant and all the photos that you have sent. They are amazing and I do hope that we get more crosses from you. I think everyone will be grateful, so get working on them. <laughs> 
I hope everyone else also enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so in the corner of this video. If you like Hoya Patricia, leave a comment down below. Tell me why you like it. And if you have it, also let me know what is your experience growing this plant. If you have another cross that you would like to recommend for me to try, do write the comment and I will blame you for spending more money on Hoyas. I hope you will have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. Bye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie, Danube Daniels, Estelle, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelsey Jager, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, PJ, Robin L. Jellings, Rachel Collette Conroy, Stephanie H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya, TJWO, Vicky Dingler, and Slokop Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, April. Arroyo, Brian Phillips, Catherine G, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlo. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline Dinsla Hacenta and Tang Watanas Riakul. Thank you all so much for your support, and once again a big thank you to Anton Jones. Thank you so much for replying to me, and thank you for telling me more about your Hoya.